Hey guys, welcome back. In my previous session, I discussed about the different layers present in the wall of the elementary canal, their modifications and importance in the process of digestion and absorption. The link is provided in the description. You can watch it for the details. Today, I will be discussing about the topic digestive glands. This is from the chapter digestion and absorption from class 11 biology. Let's start with today's topic. Digestion is the process of breakdown of complex food materials into simpler observable units. Digestive glands are those structures which secrete digestive juices and play very important role in the process of digestion. The digestive glands associated with the elementary canal include salivary glands, liver and pancreas. Let us discuss about these glands in detail. First of all, salivary glands. Saliva is mainly produced by three pairs of salivary glands. These three pairs are the parotid glands, the submaxillary or the submandibular glands the sublingual glands. These are the three pairs. Among the three pairs of glands, the parotid glands are largest glands and sublingual glands are the smallest glands. Now, parotid glands, they are located in the region, cheek region. If you look here in the diagram, these are the parotid gland. Okay? This is the position of parotid gland. And Submaxillary glands are located in the lower jaw corners and sublingual glands are located below the tongue. So, this is about the position of salivary glands. I repeat it once again. Parotid glands are located in the cheek region. Submaxillary or submandibular glands are located in the lower jaw corners and sublingual glands are located below the tongue. Now, why these two names are given for these glands, submaxillary and submandibular? What is the reason behind this? The submandibular glands, previously they were called submaxillary glands. Maxilla is actually the upper fixed bone of the jaw. Mandible is the lower movable bone of the jaw. And mandible is the only movable bone in the skull. Now, among the three pairs of salivary glands, the submandibular glands secrete larger volume of saliva in comparison with other two pairs of salivary glands. This is very important. Now, these salivary glands situated just outside the buccal cavity secrete saliva into the buccal cavity. Important statement, I repeat it again. Salivary glands situated just outside the buccal cavity secrete saliva into the buccal cavity. Okay, important statement for your exams. Now, moving to the next liver. Liver is the largest gland of the body. It weighs about 1.2 to 1.5 kg in an adult human. It is situated in the abdominal cavity just below the diaphragm. What is this diaphragm? Very simple. It is a flat internal skeletal muscle that separates thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. I repeat it again. Diaphragm is a flat internal skeletal muscle that separates thoracic cavity and abdominal cavity. Now, liver has two lobes. These are left lobe and right lobe. Inside the lobes of the liver, the hepatic lobules are present. These hepatic lobules are the structural and functional units of liver. Very important concept. I repeat it again. The hepatic lobules are the structural and functional units of liver. These hepatic lobules contain hepatic cells arranged in the form of cords. Actually, 
these hepatic cells they are arranged in the form of linear cords in between network of capillaries and a central vein now hepatic lobules are covered by glissens capsule glissen name of the scientist is a francis glissen is a british physician and anatomist glissens capsule is a thin fibrous connective tissue sheath that covers hepatic lobules very important i repeat it again glissens capsule is a thin fibrous connective tissue sheath that covers hepatic lobules now moving to the next the bile juice is secreted by the hepatic cells and this bile juice is stored and concentrated in a thin muscular sac called the gall bladder you can see this in a diagram this is a thin muscular sac called gall bladder this gall bladder stores and concentrates bile juice okay now the cystic duct of gall bladder joins with hepatic duct of liver to form common bile duct you can see here in the diagram this is the cystic duct of gall bladder and these are the two ducts coming from the two lobes of the liver they join together and form hepatic duct so the hepatic duct of liver joins with cystic duct of gall bladder and forms a common bile duct now the another one the bile duct joins with pancreatic duct to form common hepato pancreatic duct you can see here in the picture this is the bile duct and this one is pancreatic duct so the common bile duct joins with pancreatic duct to form common hepato pancreatic duct now one of the very very important concept for your exams sphincter of od guards the opening of hepato pancreatic duct od rugero od is the name of the scientist okay he is an italian physiologist and anatomist and sphincter is a circular muscle that maintains constriction of natural passage and relaxes as per required physiological functioning i repeat it again sphincter is a circular muscle that normally maintains constriction of natural passage and relaxes as per physiological requirement in the body so sphincter of od very very important question for your exams moving to the next pancreas it is a compound elongated organ it is called compound gland because it has both the parts exocrine part and endocrine part exocrine part of the pancreas secretes an alkaline pancreatic juice alkaline because the ph of the pancreatic juice is greater than 7 that is 7.8 so obviously it is an alkaline pancreatic juice has several enzymes and bicarbonates along with water here the enzymes of pancreas they play very important role in digestion of several nutrients in small intestine now here endocrine part of the pancreas secretes hormones called insulin and glucagon insulin converts excess glucose into glycogen and glucagon converts glycogen into glucose like this both these hormones maintain blood glucose levels here if we see the position of pancreas it is situated between the limbs of the u shaped duodenum you can see in this diagram this is u shaped duodenum and this is one limb and this is another limb so between the two limbs of the u shaped duodenum the pancreas is located so this is all about the pancreas position and the parts of the pancreas exocrine part and endocrine part their functions the more details of pancreatic juice their enzymes bile juice components 
saliva enzymes and their functions will be discussed in the next session now whatever we have discussed so far in today's session based on that let's discuss some very important questions for your exams the first one is the largest gland of the body is the answer is liver second question the structural and functional units of liver are the answer is hepatic lobules third question each hepatic lobule is covered by a thin connective tissue sheath called answer is glycens capsule next question bile juice is stored and concentrated in a thin muscular sac called answer is gall bladder next question the compound elongated organ situated between the limbs of duodenum is answer is pancreas next question sphincter of od guards the opening of answer is hepatopancreatic duct this is all about today's session for more videos please subscribe to my channel if you liked it please share the video with your friends i'll be back with another session have a great day thank you all